Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi, horror, mystery film called The Lazarus Effect. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Footage shows a group of medical researchers operating on a dead pig, trying to bring it back to life. They inject it with a serum and turn their machine on, but nothing happens. When one of the researchers jokes about eating the pig, the pig begins squealing before dying again, but this time with its eyes open. At a university in California, Zoe McConnell, one of the scientists, leads an intern student, Eva, into their lab to document the team's progress in experiments and research. The student meets Zoe's co-workers Nico, Clay, and Frank, who happens to be Zoe's fiancé. In the documentary, Frank explains that they managed to extract serum, codenamed Lazarus, by bonding B-cell tumors, speeding up nerve fiber regrowth. They then electrocute the serum to be activated and start neural activation by inserting the serum into the brain's temporal lobe and charging it with the right amount of energy, which is enough to trigger the serum and hope for the best results. Frank further explains that they developed the serum to help coma patients retain neural activity and is now used to bring the dead back to life. While Clay is fascinated with Eva, Nico seems smitten with Zoe as he looks at her while Clay asks him what she thinks about the student. Meanwhile, Zoe plays a piece of classical music as she prepares for their test experiment. The music stops, and a silhouette appears behind her. She looks around to check what's going on, and when she turns back, a man behind a pig mask appears. It is only Nico fooling around, trying to ease the tension as he notices her so bothered about the work. While they share the food that Nico has brought, Nico asks her about how things are between her and Frank. Zoe discloses that it's almost three years since they got engaged, but they had to put the wedding off since the university granted them to do research, and Frank seems to be serious about work. However, Nico tells her that maybe the universe is telling her something, which she dismisses, saying that the universe is telling her to finish their research soon instead. That night, Zoe has a nightmare about a burning apartment building, and she seems trapped inside it. A pair of burnt hands protrude from beneath the door while the dolls are flaming. With a gasp, Zoe awakens and grabs her sacred necklace. Frank enters the room to console her for a while, then heads to bed. The following day, the researchers discuss how they would improve the last experiment, which was almost a success. The previous experiment seems to burn the temporal brain after exposing a large voltage as an activator. Clay introduces the idea of putting a bio-insulator around the serum, delaying the activation so that the brain won't fry up. To test his hypothesis, they operate an experiment on Rocky, a deceased blind dog. They inject the serum into the test subject, but nothing appears to happen at first. They then adjust to a higher voltage, still nothing. However, Eva notices that Rocky twitches his ears upon watching through her camera. They do not believe her and say that it is due to muscle stimulation only. Nico examines Rocky and announces that seemingly nothing happened, then suddenly, Rocky begins to bark and move around. Everyone panics but still manages to calm Rocky down, and Zoe notices that its cataract is gone. Frank warns everyone not to disclose anything outside the lab. Meanwhile, they then celebrate their success with a bottle of champagne. Later that day, Frank and Zoe take Rocky to their home. They observe that he looks sad, and he doesn't want to eat his food. Zoe seems to worry about Rocky that maybe something about their experiment went wrong as her guilt clouds her mind, and she even questions their research. Frank assures her that they will help many people if the study succeeds. Frank continues to work while his fiancée heads to bed. That evening, while Zoe is sleeping alone in their bed, the door slowly opens, and Rocky appears on the bed, approaching and watching her sleep. The next day, back inside the laboratory, the student tries to play with Rocky. Still, he seems uninterested and antisocial. They put Rocky under a CT scan to further examine his brain. It turns out that the results show the same symptom of hyperthyroidism, which is an aggressive personality. Although the serum should have dissipated within hours, the team discovers that it is still in Rocky's brain. Afterward, while Rocky sits in his cage, Clay is left alone in the lab with Rocky. For a moment, he turns away from the dog, and he suddenly hears a crash. When Clay checks what's going on, he finds the fridge open with the food all over the place. So, Clay immediately returns to see Rocky and sees Rocky's cage empty. Feeling scared and worried, Clay finds Rocky growling at him. The team returns, and he tells them what happened, but no one believes him. The following day, the university's dean summons Frank to lecture him about the underground experiments, unhappy that he and his team are attempting to play God. Frank discovers that someone has been showing the dean their footage of the attempts of testing the serum on animals. At the same time, the shareholders show up at the lab and seize all the team's equipment and research database. Zoe accuses the student of telling the dean since this only happened after she arrived, but Frank says that someone wanted to take over their project and take credits for their masterpiece. However, after learning that a major pharmaceutical corporation had bought out the company funding the project, the team sneaks back into the lab at night to recreate the experiment using a security pass that Eva kept. They will do another experiment to document, serving as proof that they own the rights of the Lazarus project. Nico hacks into the security system to buy them time, while Clay obtains a second dead dog and prepares it for another test. When the test subject is ready to be activated, Zoe activates the voltage. However, the lights turn off, and Frank finds Zoe lying on the floor. It turns out that Zoe has been electrocuted. Frank rushes to her side and notices she doesn't have a pulse. Nico gives him an adrenaline needle, which Frank injects into Zoe's chest, but she doesn't respond. 
Clay brings the defibrillators over, but they don't work either. Zoe is no longer alive. While everyone is away in mourning, Frank notices that she was electrocuted because she was wearing her engagement ring on her finger. Frank, unwilling to let her go, places Zoe's body on the experiment table. Clay, Nico, and Eva argue that this is unethical upon knowing that Frank will inject the serum on her. Still, Frank goes ahead, accepting whatever consequences await him. Frank tells the rest to leave, but the team wishes to stay with him to see the procedure through. A little while later, Frank injects the serum into Zoe while Nico takes charge of the voltage dosage. When Eva switches the voltage, Zoe is still not responding. Frank orders Nico to adjust the voltage a little higher. Still, Zoe isn't responding. Nico then notices that the security guard is no longer in his station and is currently approaching them. They immediately turn off the lights and stay hidden until he leaves. Then suddenly, the team sees Zoe sitting up on the table. Frank comes towards her and examines for anything out of the ordinary. Zoe then grabs his wrist and inquires if she has passed away. That night, Frank comforts her and tends to Zoe's wound in her head while the rest of the team watches her, still shocked that she came back to life. The student asks her what she remembers when she died. However, Frank tells her that Zoe needs to rest. When the guard finally goes home, they observe Zoe by scanning her brain under the CT scan. It turns out that it has a lot of neural activity happening inside her brain. Feeling overwhelmed by scientific explanations, the student asks Nico what is going on. Nico then explains that Zoe's CT scan results show that more than 10% of her brain is active when ideally, only 10% of the human brain works. He seems worried since not many studies support what will happen if 90% of the human brain is activated. At the same time, Frank continues to comfort Zoe. He assures her that everything will be alright, and she must trust him. Frank then shows her the necklace and inserts the ring on it. While he puts the jewelry around her neck, Zoe seems to hear his thoughts saying something's wrong with her. When Frank explains what she might be experiencing, Zoe continues what he's about to say, making him uncomfortable and frightened. Frank then heads out of the room to inform others, while Zoe is left alone in the room, confused about how she can hear his thoughts and even controls the pen on the table. When Zoe tries to concentrate, she appears to listen to what everyone else is thinking. A little while later, Zoe goes to the comfort room and notices that her fingertips and the spot where Frank injected the serum have darkened. She accidentally breaks the mirror, and her reflection seems to be smirking at her, then suddenly Rocky appears growling beside her. Zoe looks at him violently, as if she's about to do something terrible then, suddenly, everyone in the hallway can hear Rocky's plea. She then heads to Frank and expresses her concern that something is wrong with her. Zoe claims that she felt trapped in the burning apartment building and was unable to escape. Frank dismisses it as a bad dream, just like what she experienced before. He then injects her with something that would make her sleep to help her ease her mind and let her rest. Meanwhile, while Zoe is sleeping, Eva notices Zoe's eyes move as she puts Zoe on a blanket. The student seems so worried, but she leaves when Zoe doesn't respond to her. As the student heads out of the room, she finds herself in the same burning building inside Zoe's nightmare. Eva walks towards the hallway and notices a young girl standing in the middle of it, holding something. She sees some burning hands reaching out as the little girl flees. The student tries to approach her, but the lights in the hallway turn off one by one. It is pitch black, then suddenly, a bright light appears, and a burning hand grabs her wrist. She wakes up screaming, and the researchers find her lying on the floor. She walks out of the room where Zoe sleeps, and she then describes what she saw, including the burning apartment and people pleading for help. Nico then notices a visible burn on Eva's wrist and demands Frank for answers. He discloses Zoe's traumatic childhood experience in which she was trapped in a burning building and saw her neighbors sticking their fingers out, trying to escape. According to Eva, Zoe may have seen something before she died, and her soul may be trapped. At the same time, Zoe is left alone in her room. While sleeping, she speaks prayers as she's having a nightmare again. However, she stops praying and grabs her necklace, and slowly floats from the couch, when all of a sudden, she wakes up with her eyes going hellishly black. While Clay takes care of Eva's burn Nico works on his computer alone in a room when Zoe suddenly startles him. She begs him to help her figure out what's wrong with her, and she uses a kiss to try to manipulate him. He rejects it because he knows it is not appropriate. Zoe appears upset about something from the past. She says she spent her whole life trying to make up for one mistake, only to end up in hell. While still feeling scared and confused, Nico tries to comfort Zoe, but her eyes go all black again, and the lights dim, and she vanishes. A supernatural force drags Nico inside a massive metal cabinet, trying to escape from it. Zoe then reappears and telekinetically crushes the container, killing Nico inside with blood flowing through it. Meanwhile, Frank, Eva, and Clay return inquiring about Nico's whereabouts while Zoe maintains her composure and remains silent. Clay tries to call for assistance, but the power goes out, as well as the emergency lines. While Clay and Frank decipher how they will get out of the laboratory while the power is off, Zoe insults the student for being there, trying to be part of their team. This incident gives the student a hint that she has something to do with Nico's disappearance. When Clay and Frank return, Zoe is still playing ignorant of what is happening. Clay yells at Zoe to tell them where Nico is, but Zoe uses her supernatural abilities to choke Clay with his e-cigarette. While struggling, Clay discovers that it is Zoe's fault as she winks and smiles at him. Frank and Eva make a last-minute effort to save him, but it's too late. When they take the e-cig out of his mouth, they know it was Zoe's fault. They turn around and look at Zoe, 
and she's staring blankly at them with no remorse at what happened. The lights turn off, and Zoe vanishes once more. However, when the lights turn on, they see Zoe summoning the equipment into the air and throwing them into Frank and Eva. A little while later, the two realize something is seriously wrong and attempt to hinder Zoe with a syringe. Frank advises the student to inject the needle no matter what happens. He heads out and discovers Zoe sobbing in the hallway. Frank approaches her, telling her that she's still the Zoe he adores. However, she can read his mind and deduces that he doesn't believe she's the same. Zoe grabs his head and squeezes it until his neck snaps. Eva flees when she sees this while Zoe takes the rest of the serum and injects it into herself. The lights keep going out, leaving Eva and Zoe in the dark. A classical piece of music plays as Eva searches for Zoe. When the student turns off the music and prepares to get the syringe, Zoe appears upside down, causing Eva to stumble into the ground. Zoe approaches the scared student while speaking prayers when suddenly Zoe throws her into the burning building once more. Eva runs into the little girl in the burning hallway, who she recognizes as Zoe. Little Zoe gives Eva a book of matches, which reveals that she's the one who started the fire. Eva assures her that it was not her fault and that she can correct the situation by letting the neighbors out. The evil Zoe then enters the hallway with her skin scorched and her eyes blackened. As evil Zoe approaches, little Zoe goes to open the neighbor's door. However, when she opens the door, they are blinded by a bright white light. It appears that Eva manages to inject the syringe into Zoe, who apologizes for her actions before collapsing. To make sure, the student injects another one in her neck, causing Zoe to die. Meanwhile, Eva falls over upon hearing a siren sound, where a firefighter arrives with a response team. He walks over to Eva and consoles her as she cries in fear. However, Eva notices that Zoe's body is missing. Eva turns to face the fireman but comes face to face with Zoe, who then breaks her neck. A little while later, Zoe lines up Clay, Nico, and Eva's bodies next to each other as she places Frank's body on the experiment table. She then injects the serum from her own body into him. With a gasp, Frank comes back to life. This story is based on the Lazarus phenomenon, also known as the Lazarus syndrome, which is a delayed return of spontaneous circulation after CPR occurs. In other words, after cardiac arrest, dead patients experience an unexpected return of cardiac activity. According to the New Testament of the Bible, the syndrome is named after Lazarus of Bethany, who was brought back to life by Jesus Christ four days after his death. In this story, a serum whose initial aim was to keep coma patients' brains active turns out to have a rather unexpected side effect of resurrecting the recently deceased, demonstrating a Lazarus effect. It has many thematic potentials, with the experiment serving as a focal point for various issues concerning work, love, and faith. As shown in Zoe and Frank's relationship, is it possible for two people to have a long-term romantic relationship if one is religious and the other is not? Can a partnership built on shared professional success survive if it's otherwise ill-fated? Is it possible for humans to know what happens after they die? Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.